years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. Now, once we've sent the proposals or client portal to the client, the next step is for them to remit payment uh, for the items that they're approving. Okay, in the case that we're looking at, they are not making a full payment for all items that we propose. So I kind of want to look at the project as a whole so we can make sense of their payment. Okay, so I went ahead and just pulled up a client uh, project worksheet. And what that looks like here is you can clearly see that um, they have an amount due. Their payment is for $5,995.55. Okay, obviously that's uh, not for approval of all items. So if you have a breakdown, I go ahead and usually look at what that is. And in this case, they are approving um, this base. They are a, approving the uh, flower arrangement. They are also approving um, the coffee table book, and the chandelier. Nothing else is approved, and I know that because of their payment. I went ahead and created this project worksheet template to be able to pull up everything that's on this project. You will see that on this uh, project worksheet, it does break out proposal order if there was one, and an invoice number if there was one. Okay, it also breaks out all the total costs, and these are the client costs, okay, not ours, not to purchase. Okay, this is on the client side, and I'm, I'm very particular to label these project worksheets. And you can see that client is in capital letters because this is the only format that would be shareable with the client. Okay, if it does not have that, that's just my marker and, and my notes. Um, I... If it doesn't say client in capital, I would not um, share the report with the client. Okay, just because there could be um, pertinent information that they're not privy to. So um, in this case, you can clearly see that there is no client payment posted and that the full amount for all these uh, goods for the foyer is uh, open. Okay, um, if you need a copy of this report, there is one um, in the handout. Next thing we're going to do is to collect the payment from the client for the approved items. Now, we identified all the items on the project, but in order to post the payment, we're going to accounting, money in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull up if it didn't already default to the client, which is client Jones. You can see here that there is $2,500. I know that to be the retainer amount that we collected. And I also go ahead and put notes here just so I can see that. So the client retainer paid without looking anything else up. I like to have this at a moment's glance. So I typically would put it here so that I don't have to um, look that information up. I know that that client retainer, there's no guesswork, it's 2,500, okay? So um, what that looks like here is just funds available, okay? If there was any, other dollar amounts, I may question it or want to know where that came from. <clears throat> but in this case, we are going to uh, post the client payment for the approved proposals. Okay. As mentioned in the prior videos, um, you can do one of four postings in this money in area. Now, I 
like to not have anybody post uh, receive miscellaneous payment until they are further along in the training process. Okay, so um, typically you're going to just concentrate on these three types of payments. Receive client payment, which is the retainer that we collected previously, or if I didn't know how to apply uh, a client payment, I may go ahead and select this, um, receive client payment, just so I can post the payment and, um, and then probably send an email or note to the client asking them specifically what they are uh, wanting to pay um, with their payment, okay, if it's not clearly uh, marked. Now, if I wanted to apply any of the funds that were already posted, and in this case, I don't because there's only the retainer there, I would select apply client payment. That's taking from funds available and applying it to the goods here, okay? So in this case, I'm going to receive and apply because I know the items that are approved. I'm going to go ahead and um, post it as a check, and it's um, check 6398, and the total dollar amount is 5,995.55, okay? And um, what I like to always do, and I, I explained this in the prior video, is I like for you to keep whatever the default is in what you're doing. So if it's receive, you can see that it changes. If it's receive and apply, it, it also kind of shows that. The reason I um, want you posting this way is that in the event there was an issue or should we have to go back and re-review your work for any number of reasons, I like to be able to follow what you did and kind of find where we went wrong, okay? And um, we will get into more troubleshooting as we move forward. So in this case, I'm going to receive and apply check 6398. Now, previously I advised that we were collecting payment for the uh, large base, the floral arrangement, the coffee table book, and the chandelier. Okay, and you can see here, that it does tie out. If for some reason I didn't have the total amounts correct, you would not be able to post choosing this receive and apply. The reason for that being, and I'll go ahead and try to post it and it won't let me. And you can see that it just won't take it. See, this red um, marking right here says that it has to balance. So you can see that it's asking me to allocate the 3,362.04, which was for the chandelier. And once I do that, it makes the payment balance and I can now post this payment. I will go ahead and do that. It does ask you to confirm once more. And you can see that it does post, but this goes away after a while. So if you don't catch this, um, sometimes you might miss it, but you can clearly see that there are proposal deposits. So what this basically breaks out is we have collected $8,495.55 from the client, $5,995.55 were proposal deposits, and the client retainer remains in funds available. That is correct, and that is how it should read. So now that we've posted the client payment, the next thing that I typically like to do is to either come here to the project area and look at everything this way. The other way we can do is to go ahead and pull that project worksheet that we previously set up. And you can now see that um, the payments have been applied to the items, okay? You can clearly see that there is no balance due. So that's typically our cue to create the purchase orders and send those to the vendors. 